Hi everyone, a very warm welcome to What's That Bug? A very short introduction to some of the common insects and bugs that you might find in your garden or school grounds or your local park. We're going to take a little look at how we might look for some of these insects and also a few tips on how to identify them. Once you start looking, you might be amazed at how many different types of insect live in your garden. So where should we look for insects? Well, uh, looking on flowers is a really good place to start as lots of our pollinating insects like to visit flowers to find food, both for themselves and their offspring. Um, so this lovely orange butterfly on the top left, um, this is called a large skipper, is uh, feeding, getting nectar from this yellow flower. So you can look on flowers um, for insects, but also the flowers on, on trees can be really good to look at too. Other insects like to just bask on leaves to warm up. So this can also be a really good place to look. And this is what this hoverfly is doing at the bottom right of the side. Um, but also look in, in the grass for different types of um, bugs and insects. Um, both long and short grass can be really, um, really good. And as well as looking for insects, see if you can hear anything. Maybe close your eyes and see if you can hear the buzz of a bumblebee. You can also look for different mini beasts in other areas of, of your garden. Maybe if you have a wood pile or compost heap, or maybe just an untidy corner with um, some leaf litter and things like beetles, snails and earthworms, all like these sorts of places. So what do you need to look for bugs? Well, the good news is you don't really need anything to go out and observe insects as you can just sit quietly and look what is happening around you. But there are some things that might help you get a closer look to our insects. So um, a camera to take a photo is always really helpful, whether that's the camera on your phone or an actual camera. But be careful not to scare the insect off by getting too close. You can also use um, a butterfly net or a sweet net to catch an insect and put it in a pot for that close up look. If you do have a net, use it carefully so you don't damage the insect and always make sure you release the insect from its pot once you've had a good look at it. Um, a magnifying glass or hand lens or a magnifying pot will help you see your insect up really close. And also um, having some sort of identification chart will really help you. And there's lots online and on our website to help you work out what you've seen. So now we know where to look and what we might need to help us get a closer look at our insect. Let's see the sorts of things we might find. OK, we'll start by having a look at some of our bumblebees. So these are big and furry bees um, so they're quite distinctive they've got two pairs of wings um, and three pairs of legs and you'll see them going around to different flowers to collect pollen which they take back to the nest to feed their young but they also have a drink of nectar from the flowers um, they tend to uh, be different colours and this is how we tell the different species apart. Got different colours, they might have some yellow bands on them, they uh, might have different um, colour bottoms as well. So up here on this slide, we're on the top left, we've got our red-tailed bumblebee. So this is a really nice easy one to look out for. It's all black um, with a red tip to its, its bottom. Um, other bees are all ginger. So this is our common carder bee up in the top right. This is just a nice gingery um, um, bumblebee. And then on the bottom left, we've got another one that's um, ginger. It's got a ginger, uh, what we call thorax, so the middle part of the body. Um, and then it's got a um, black and then it's got a white bottom. And then uh, we've got our garden bumblebee on the bottom right. And this is a, a, a black bee with a white bottom and three yellow bands on it. So when you're next out and you think you've got a, a bumblebee, see if you can see how many bands it's got, if it's got bands, and also have a look at the colours and if the, um, the uh, tip of its bottom is a different colour. As well as bumblebees, there is a big group of bees known as solitary bees. These bees are generally smaller than our bumblebees and tend to be less densely hairy. Um, they also visit flowers to feed, so that's a really good place to uh, notice them and see them. 
They can be very variable in size. Some of them can be quite tiny and they also vary in their appearance. So some definitely look a bit like small bumblebees because they're a little bit hairy, but they will be smaller than bumblebees. Some are a bit striped and so look like wasps. Um, so although they're not easy to tell apart, you should be able to work out that it's not a bumblebee. You might also spot some flies in your garden and then there is an amazing number of flies in the UK. In fact, there's over 7000 species and unlike bees, flies only have one pair of wings and their eyes tend to be much bigger. They take up much more of their head. Flies can come in all shapes and sizes. So some are striped, like this tiger hoverfly shown at the top left of this slide or our marmalade hoverfly at the bottom right. Some flies are a bit hairy like bumblebees. So uh, in the bottom uh, middle of this slide, we've actually got a hoverfly that tries to look like a bee for added protection. But look at the size of its eyes, they're really big. And then in the spring, you can look out for a bee fly, which is shown in the top right here. It's got this really long proboscis, which is good for getting nectar from deep plants. So you will often see it around um, flowers such as primroses in the spring. And then we have lots of uh, green and blue bottle species of flies. So see if you can spot any of these shiny flies when you're out and about. With any luck, you should see some butterflies when you're out looking for insects. They often like to bask with their wings open, which helps them warm up. And this means that earlier in the morning is a really good time to take some photos of the butterfly without it flying off. So once you've spotted a, a butterfly, have a close up look and see what colour it is. So some are blue, some are brown, some have orange or red on them and some are just white. Also see what pattern you can notice on the wings. Is it all blue like this common blue butterfly in the bottom right? Or does it have stripes like the Red Admir Admiral with its bright orangey stripes on all of its wings? Also have a look at the pattern of the wings. Does it have spots or eye-like shapes? And all of these things will help you in identifying your butterfly. As well as butterflies, you might also spot a moth. So most moths fly at night, but we do also see some in the daytime too. And it's often difficult to tell moths and butterflies apart sometimes as they can look very similar. But a couple of common ones you might see are the hummingbird hawk moth and the cinnabar moth. So the hummingbird hawk moth shown in the top left here, so called because they hover at flowers when they are feeding. And so they look just like hummingbirds. And this is a migrant species. So some years we get lots and lots of them in the gardens. So the cinnabar on the top right is an unmistakable moth. The hind wings are bright red and you'll catch glimpses of these when the moth flies. And this uh, colour in combination with the red and black forewings make it a very distinctive moth. Um, but lots of our moths are a bit plainer and browner. And here's just a couple of examples. This is the antler moth and our silver Y moth. You might also spot some beetles and bugs when you're out looking for insects. Beetles can often be seen on flowers, but can also be spotted basking on leaves or basking on, on wood piles as well. So here we've got two of our common summer species of beetle, this lovely green swollen thighed beetle, which you can see how it's got his name, and also the red soldier beetle. So they're the two on the top here. But you might also find some insects that look a bit like beetles, but actually they're not. So on the bottom here, we've got uh, one of our shield bugs on the left. So this is a hairy shield bug um, and shield bugs are often green or brown or purpley brown and have some different markings on the wings. But they're always this sort of shape. And if you look for insects by using a net to sweep long grass, for example, you can often get a lot of bugs um, like this one on the bottom right. And these are all uh, types of plant bugs. Ladybirds are another type of beetle that you might spot when you're out and about. And there's a few species you might come across. So if you see a ladybird, why not make a note of what colour it is? Is it red or yellow? Um, is it orange or is it black? Um, and then look at what colour its spots are. They're most often black, 
but they can also be red or white. And finally, have a look at how many spots the ladybird has. So all of these things will help you identify what type of ladybird you have found. So on this slide, we've got uh, the seven spot ladybird on the top left. So this has a nice red body uh, with seven black spots. Um, and then this yellow ladybird is the 14 spot ladybird, which has got a yellow body with 14 black spots. So often these black spots are a bit joined together. At the bottom left, we've got a pine ladybird. So this is a black ladybird with four red spots on it. And finally, we've got the orange ladybird, with the, which is orange with white spots. And this is what the larvae of a ladybird looks like. So you'll often spot these on leaves, and these are really good to have in your garden because they eat lots of aphids, um, which is great if you're uh, into your gardening. So um, yeah, keep an eye out for these as well. There's all sorts of other invertebrates that you might spot when you're out looking in your garden or park. So in the top left here, we've got one of our bush crickets. So look at its nice long um, antennae. And you'll find grasshoppers in crickets and crickets in areas of long grass. And um, they don't come out onto uh, the flowers, but they like the long grass. And you might actually hear these before you see them. They like to um, sing from the long grass. And if you look around um, any sort of areas of dead wood or wood piles, you might spot um, a millipede or a woodlouse. So in the top uh, middle here, we've got one of our millipedes. If you find one of these, see if you can count how many legs it has. And that's our woodlouse down on the uh, bottom right. Um, you might also see um, insects like this lovely green lacewing on the bottom left. Um, and you might also see some spiders on flowers. This one on the top right is one of our crab spiders and they like to wait to ambush other insects visiting the flowers. And there's lots of different spiders you might find in all sorts of different places. So we've had a little look at some of the insects you might come across if you go on a bug hunt. So why not get out into your garden or your park or local green space and just see what you can find. Um, thank you so much for listening today and I hope you enjoy finding lots of insects. Bye.